that we're reading today from Ezekiel 37. This is such a well-known passage, the vision of the valley of the dry bones. So let's hear it with fresh, um, fresh ears today and uh, hear um, maybe a fresh word today. And by that I mean not just the, um, the word that, that I preach, but the Spirit. I have never um, ceased to be amazed at the ability of the Spirit to be able to reveal the word that's preached to different people in different ways. And uh, as a preacher, it's a great reminder to us that it's not just up to us. <laughs> We've got a part to play, but the Lord can do even more than that. So let's hear with fresh ears. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very, very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. And then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. I will bring you to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. <clears throat> An experience about, oh, more than 30 years ago now, when I was back living in Canberra as a young person, and... Um, we were door knocking, inviting people to uh, an event that, uh, an outreach event that our church was running. And um, you know how some people put stickers on their front door. And I'll never forget this one. It was really sad. And it read like this. I feel much better now that I've given up hope. And uh, when I opened the door and I saw the lady, she didn't look better at all. The hopelessness in her eyes could not be denied in a sense you understand where she's coming from but some people just you know hope and hope and hope that a situation might change and continue to get disappointed continue to get their heart broken continue to get let down and so it's easier not to hope it's easier not to believe and so you understand from a human point of view the intent behind that sad as it is but the reality is nobody ever feels better when they've given up hope. Hopelessness is one of the most destructive, devastating experiences we can have. 
Hopelessness leads to the tragedy of suicide at worst. Hopelessness leads to depression and more. And this vision speaks into a situation of hopelessness. It's a very, very bizarre, strange vision that the Lord allows Ezekiel to have, but it speaks powerfully to the situation of hopelessness. A bit of background, Ezekiel was what we call an exilic prophet. Uh, what that meant, there's pre-exilic prophets, exilic prophets and post-exilic prophets in the Old Testament. What that meant is he prophesied during the period of the exile, when the people of Israel had been exiled into Babylon for those 70 years. Ezekiel prophesied into that time. Ezekiel was among the exiles. He was among those who were taken captive. He was there and into that situation he spoke. So just try to imagine that's the scene he's speaking into. 70 years they were there. That means there was a whole, would have been a whole generation of people, who, a whole generation of Israelites who wouldn't have known the homeland. There were some who came who would have never returned. They would have died in exile. And there were some, maybe very young when they were exiled, who remembered Israel and wondered if they'd ever return. So that's the scene. The scene of uh, people who were experiencing great hopelessness. They lament that they're as good as dead. Their hopes have been perished and they feel, because remember, the, the land to them, the land of Israel, was so significant to the people of Israel. That was the land the Lord gave them. And for them, they, they felt they could only really worship in that land where the temple was in Jerusalem, the land that the Lord gave them. That's why they sang by the rivers of Babylon. We sat down, we wept when we remember Zion. How can we sing the Lord's songs in a foreign land? They felt they couldn't. So that's why they experienced such hopelessness year after year after year, hoping they return but couldn't. Now Ezekiel had repeatedly prophesied, people, this is your own fault. Ezekiel had reminded him, remember, the pre-exilic prophets had prophesied, Isaiah and others had prophesied, warning the people, unless they repented of their sin, unless they repented of their idolatry, unless they repented of their rebellion against the Lord, judgment would come. They would move beyond the boundary of God's protection and know his judgment. That's how I see judgment. It's not God just suddenly deciding to wipe people out because remember God said he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and his covenant with his people, his covenant was the covenant of love and grace and protection. But we can choose to move beyond God's protection. We can choose by our actions to move beyond the boundaries of God's protective love. And that's what the people of Israel did. And they experienced then through the foreign nation of Babylon, through the pagan king Nebuchadnezzar, they experienced judgment through the invading of, of Babylon into Israel and taking exile. So Ezekiel had prophesied that this would happen. And he'd warn them, this is your own fault. But now, God, see, God doesn't give up. God is not a God to say, well, you get what you deserve. In the midst of that desolation they were experiencing, in the midst of that hopelessness, God speaks. And he gives Ezekiel this powerful vision. And this is what happened. In a vision, the Lord brought Ezekiel to a valley full of dry disconnected, dismembered bones. That's what Ezekiel saw through his own eyes, dried, dismembered bones. And the Lord asks Ezekiel a question, can these bones live? And if we put it today, we'd say God only knows. <laughs> That's really what Ezekiel said, Lord, you know, I can't answer that question. And then the Lord told him to do something which would have seemed very bizarre, very strange. 
it would have taken a fair bit of faith to do what the Lord asked him to do. He said, prophesy to the bones, Ezekiel, and say, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now imagine how strange that would be. And Ezekiel's used to prophesying to people, live people, but basically the Lord was asking him, I want you to prophesy to dry dead bones and say, hear the word of the Lord. So this would have taken a step of faith, but that's what Ezekiel did. He followed, he was obedient to the Lord, and he prophesied to the bones. And we read what happened. Suddenly, the bones began to come together. These dismembered bones become together. What was even more astounding, the sinews came on them, then flesh, then skin. Ezekiel prophesied to the dead bones and they came to life. But isn't it interesting? There was no breath in them. They were there and they were a body, but no breath in them. Sadly, that's how many people feel. They're alive, they're living, they're functioning, their body's functioning, but it's like there's no life anymore through the experiences they've had. And the Lord said, okay, Ezekiel, prophesy to the breath. And so he prophesied to the breath as the Lord commanded him. And we read, breath came in to these beings and they were alive again. That which was dead came to life. That which seemed hopeless gave way to hope. That which seemed impossible became possible. And that was a powerful, powerful message to the people of Israel. A powerful, powerful message to the people of Israel. And it's interesting, I mean, this was down in our lectionary, but given the events of the last week, where so many people in our state are experiencing what we could call as a situation of utter devastation. Here is this word of hope. What's the message here? There's a number of messages. If Yahweh, the God of Israel, is able to restore life to dry, dead, dismembered bones, is anything beyond his power? Is there anything beyond his power? Situations that seem hopeless, never are through the eyes of God. Ezekiel started looking through his own eyes. Through his own eyes, he saw dry, dismembered bones. But through the work of the Holy Spirit, he began to see through God's eyes. And through God's eyes, he saw those bones coming to life. He saw that dead being raised. He saw powerless become power. He saw hopelessness become hope. And that's the challenge we face. It's when we look through our eyes, our human eyes, we will only see what we see. And what our brain can process. And situations do seem hopeless. But it's learning to look through God's eyes and see through God's eyes. The Nobel Peace Prize, one of the Nobel Peace Prize recipients is a guy called Eli Wiesel. He was a Holocaust survivor. And he and a Jew, of course, obviously, and he made this observation that Ezekiel's vision of the Valley of Dry Bones bears no date. He says this vision bears no date because every generation needs to hear in its own time that these bones can live again, looking through God's eyes, seeing through God's vision. So how do we do this? It's easy to say, yeah, well, okay, I need to not look through human eyes, but see this situation through God's eyes. Well, let's look. I believe Ezekiel, in this dialogue between Ezekiel and the Lord, we have a pattern here. We have a pattern here. But let me first ask, what seems hopeless to you? 
world events, world governments. We're talking about people of North Queensland. What about the people of Syria? What they've experienced. But that's on a global stay scale. What about on a personal scale? What are you experiencing or maybe have you experienced or know people who are experiencing which seems like hopelessness in terms of health? Hopelessness in terms of finances. Hopelessness in terms of relationships. Hopelessness in terms of people we know and love who are far from God, who we've prayed for and, oh, will this ever turn around? Every one of us have had experiences where our hope seems to be dead and we think, I can't go on. And while through the Lord we'd never do it, we can resonate with the feeling of that dear lady who said, I think I feel a lot better now that I've given up hope. It's just, it's almost if it's, it's hard. Sometimes it's scary to have hope because of the fear of that hope getting dashed again. So let's look what Ezekiel did or what the Lord commanded Ezekiel to do. Ezekiel saw this vision of hopelessness and the Lord said to him, prophesy into it. He saw dead dry bones and the Lord said, prophesy to the bones, hear the word of the Lord. There's a clue. Where we face a situation of hopelessness, the Lord says, prophesy to it. Now we think, but I, and this is it, we think, well, I haven't got the gift of prophecy, I'm not a prophet. No, well, that's not true. Prophecy is both, for, yes, it is foretelling, but it's also foretelling. Being prophetic is declaring the word of the Lord, speaking the word of the Lord into people's lives, <coughs> into situations. What do we face at the moment that seems hasteless? The Lord would say, prophesy to that situation. Declare the word of the Lord to that situation. So let's, what does this mean? Let's, what, what does this mean? So let's take, for example, health. What can we declare there with this sickness? Thus says the Lord. I am the Lord who heals you. Thus says the Lord, by, your stri by his stripes you are healed. Into financial challenges, let's declare the word of the Lord. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He is our provider. So many words we could come up with. Situations which seem impossible relationally, declare the word of the Lord. He is the God who reconciles. He is reconciled to him, us in Christ Jesus. And there are many, many others. The point is, in the midst of what we face, the Lord would call us back to his word. That's how we see through his eyes. Because in his word is truth. In his word is life. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of Christ. So the more we read God's word, the more we declare God's word, the more the Holy Spirit within us is able to bring that word to life for our situation now. This word is not just a historical record. That is, if that was the case, it wouldn't be different to any other book. But this is the living and active word, sharper than any double-edged sword, as the writer of the Hebrew reminds us, breaking through the things that would divide, breaking through the things that would bring hopelessness. So what that means is the more we meditate on God's word, the more we read God's word, the more the Holy Spirit will bring that word to life when we need it to declare it into a situation. Do you realize that is prophesying? Declaring the word of the Lord into a situation his word into it, not the circumstances operating out of a God-breathed vision and operating out of his word, not the circumstances. So prophesy into the situation. But what else do we learn from Ezekiel? So Ezekiel did that. 
But then the job wasn't finished. Bones came together, sinew, flesh, skin. But Lord, that's amazing, that's a miracle in itself, but there's no breath. The Lord said, prophesy again. Prophesy to the breath. What do we learn from this? I believe this is a powerful word to us not to give up, to continue to declare the word of the Lord, to continue to declare the word of the Lord. If you're not getting the full answer to your prayer, the, the, the response is not to go away twisted and bitter or disillusioned or confused or that. Keep declaring the word of God. Keep prophesying into that situation. Keep declaring the word. Keep going back to the word and declaring that because that way we are focusing on God's word, not the destructive circumstances. We are focusing on hope, not hopelessness. We are focusing on life, not death. And we are therefore operating out of God's vision. We are seeing it through God's eyes, through our eyes. If we continue to focus on hopelessness and death and desolation, we're going to see more of it. We're going to see more of it and we're going to join the prophets of doom who are just looking at the situation and getting more and more worried, wearing more and more fearful, getting more and more focusing on that and becoming prophets of doom. What God needs is not prophets of doom, it's prophets of hope. Prophets of life, and all of us have called to be prophets of life, prophets of hope, prophets of victory, prophets of power, prophets of grace, prophets of joy. And that will happen when we see things through God's eyes, and we will see things through God's eyes when we declare His word. And to declare His word, we need to know His word, to immerse ourselves in His word. You know, God's amazing. The other thing that's about this passage that gets to me is God didn't need Ezekiel to do what he did. God didn't need Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones or prophesy to the breath. Why didn't God just show Ezekiel and say, now Ezekiel, watch this, and he could have seen it happen. But instead, God chose to work with Ezekiel and through Ezekiel. You know what? God doesn't need you and he doesn't need me. He's the all-powerful, all-knowing God of heaven and earth. God doesn't need you or me to do what God is going to do and will do in this world. Yet for reasons which we will never understand, God desires to be in relationship with us and God desires to work with us and through us. God chooses to do that. And he always has. God chose to work with Moses and through Moses. Before that, with Abraham and through Abraham. God chose to work with and through his own son. And when his own son commissioned us and said, go and make disciples of all nations. And when he said, go into all the world and preach the good news and these signs shall follow those who believe, we read, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word through the signs that follow. The Lord Lord worked with them. Why? Because God desires to. God wants to. He doesn't need to. He doesn't have to. But he wants to. And whenever we shrink back, not only are we robbing ourselves of the blessing of seeing the power and the presence and the hope of God work through us, we're depriving the Lord of what he really wants to do. He loves us so much and desires so much to be in communion, in relationship with us, that he wants to work with through us. So whenever we shrink back and leave it up to someone else, we miss out and so does God. But whenever we choose to be open vessels of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that he desires to flow through us, whenever we choose to work with him so more and more of the fruit of the Spirit are manifest in our lives, 
The more seriously we take the word of Jesus, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. And the more we say, Lord, what can we do together for you today or this week or this month? We're in partnership with the God of heaven and earth in his work of creatively, creatively and amazingly transforming this world. We're a part of it. We are a part of that process. One day we will share together in a new heaven and earth. It's not just a new heaven, a new heaven and earth. My sense in that is in the new heaven and earth become one where we share in this new creation together. But we are not separate from that process. We are part of that transformation. Yeah, it's not there yet. And because it's not there yet, there is evil, there is uh, sadness, there is oppression and all of that in the world which we know too well. But the more we look at that, the more we see it. But the more we prophesy the word of God into it, the more we will see his victory, his hope, his transformation, and that will motivate us to declare his word more. So let me summarise this up. Let me summarise this. When faced with seemingly hopeless situations, global, national or personal, remember, God is able to do more than we could ask or imagine. We need to look through his eyes, not our own. God will do his part, but he wants to work through us. And so that means we need to rise up in faith and declare his word into situations. And continue to do so until we see more and more and more a vision. You look at other people and you think, wow, they seem to have so much more faith than me. God has not bestowed any more favour on them than you. But the more we know his word. The more we hunger for his word, the more we feed on his word, the more we meditate on his word, the more we are open to the Holy Spirit bringing that word to life, the more our faith will go, grow because faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Let us be people like Ezekiel who take up our prophetic mantle and prophesy into hopelessness as we close Let's do that now. I want to lead us. Lord, we declare your word into the desolation of our state at the moment. We declare, Lord, your love and your grace and your hope into people whose hearts are broken at the moment. We declare peace into those who are fearful, Lord, who are fearful of what this means for them financially and otherwise. We declare hope into businesses that are challenged at the moment. We declare your favour into insurance companies. Lord, we pray for righteousness here, Lord. We pray for favour here. We pray for justice here. We declare healing into communities that have just been ravaged. Lord, your word is faithful and true. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. No, that means no destruction that this earl can bring can separate us from your love. We declare that word in the situation and pray that thousands of people may know your love and may know your power and may know your goodness afresh. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Lord, your word is, I will put my spirit within you and you will live. 
We declare in the name of Jesus, dry bones live. We declare in the name of Jesus, Lord, pour out your spirit afresh upon us and in us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.